All right, let's go over the clock source parameters in the control tab. Remember in the beginning of the series when I had Karma set up so it's running off of an external MIDI clock? Um, I would, had demonstrated that if I take away that external MIDI clock, then Karma doesn't know when to create a ne its next event. And that ties into what these parameters do in a way. So right now, Cubase is sending a MIDI clock. And it's only sending that MIDI clock when it's running. So if I stop that clock, you'll see that Karma is no longer getting a live signal. And if I start it, then you'll see that Karma will get a blinking light showing that it is receiving a clock source. If I hit a pad, it functions exactly how we would imagine. If I stop its clock source and then hit a pad, it doesn't know when to create an event because it doesn't have a clock source. It doesn't know the timing of events, when they should occur in time. So this clock advance mode is essentially shifting that clock source from internal to dynamic MIDI. Let me go ahead and keep this clock source going. Since usually, I think when you're using Karma, you're probably going to have it functioning off of its own internal clock source anyway. Um, so anyway, if it's if this parameter is on internal, then it's functioning off of either its internal clock source or an external clock source based off of the uh, whatever you have the sync window set to. If I switch it to dynamic MIDI, then it's using dynamic MIDI events to decide when events should occur. So we set dynamic MIDI in the dynamic MIDI tab. And just for illustrative purposes, I'm going to choose note outside zone. Of course, we can choose a whole bunch of dynamic MIDI sources. But for now, I'll just choose note outside zone. And I can talk about those other parameters later. I'm going to send this dyna dynamic MIDI source to clock advance. And I'm going to have that effect module one. Again, um, I don't want to focus too much on this window. We're really just trying to discuss these parameters right here. With this set on dynamic MIDI, um, it's now getting, it's now, uh, events are now controlled by the dynamic MIDI source, which is note outside zone. Um, so in order for that to function correctly, I have to go to my zones per tab. Um, again, this is something that, I, uh, another window that I'll get into when I get to that tutorial, but you know, I can't really explain that, that parameter without jumping in here. Um, so I want the first module, uh, to only receive notes from C3 up. I can just click and drag. And so now I have note outside zone. Here's my outside zone. So for me, I'm on a Chrono 61. This is just my bottom octave. Um, I have note events here triggering or controlling the clock advance mode. That's how I have the, uh, the dynamic MIDI setup. So now when I hit a pad, we don't hear anything, but that's because I haven't hit any notes to cause an event to advance or to basically tell karma when an event should occur so if i go ahead and hit keys in the bottom octave actually let me give more volume to this there we go so let's talk about clock advance oh no 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 we have still more parameters to run through here um we could choose to have a combination between uh, internal and dynamic MIDI. And basically, that just means that when I hit a pad, it will function off of the internal clock source from Cubase. But then I could also hit um, notes in this bottom octave to trigger the next event. Hopefully you can hear my uh, keyboard in the microphone so you can tell that I'm hitting notes alongside of this pad. The next one would be dynamic MIDI stops the internal clock source. So that's pretty obvious, right? We'll hit a pad, it'll start playing. But then as soon as I hit a note on the keyboard, that dynamic MIDI will stop the internal clock and it will just make this function as if it was only functioning off dynamic MIDI from that point forward. And that just happens every time um, I re-trigger a pad. Cool. So I'll switch it to dynamic MIDI only. 
And then the clock advance size basically tells uh, Karma how many events should occur whenever you have um, a clock event. So right now, with it just on one event, basically that's just one step in this arpeggiator. That's just how this GE is programmed. So if I hit a pad and then hit a note, we see it climbing up incrementally in the note series. And then if I choose a different event size, like quarter notes, then this is kind of deciding um, how many events should occur per every dynamic MIDI event or clock event. Um, so it basically takes the amount of events that would happen in the time span of a quarter note and clumps them all together. Uh, so if I hold a, a pad down and then have an event occur, we get four events. And that's because if I, uh, I can actually just close this window. If I jump over to the rhythm tab, the arpeggiator is set to 16th notes. And how many 16th notes are in a quarter note? Four. So when I hit a pad and then I hit an event, we get four events because we're on quarter note. Of course, if I were on 16th notes, or let's just use uh, eighth notes. And then if I were to hit a pad and then hit an event, we get two. I actually close this window too. I'll free up some. Um, well, what happens if we have an event that's too fast? Like what if we have um, 30 second notes? Well, in this case, every other time that I hit a key, we get an event. So you can hear that, hopefully you can hear me hit the key. No event, event, no event, event. The next parameter is the velocity sensitivity. So in this particular case, um, the data that I'm using to advance the clock is MIDI note data, which is packaged with velocity. If I were using something like um, CC1, you know, which is your mod wheel, which is your, which is usually ass um, assigned to your mod wheel, that would um, not carry any kind of velocity data. So this parameter wouldn't matter in that case. But since we are using velocity data in this package, then it does matter. So um, let me go back down to one event. Um, basically, what this parameter will do is scale the velocity. So if I um, have this at one, then every time that I advance the clock, it's basically based off of the velocity that I play on the keyboard. Just for illustrative purposes though, let me show you something. I'm gonna switching back to internal. And then when I hit a pad, you hear that there is already velocity in this GE. To get rid of that, I could just take away velocity accents by turning up this velocity accent slider. All that did was scale the velocity down to zero. So basically, no matter what, none of this, uh, none of this programming matters. So if I hit a pad now, it's just full velocity across the board. Um, and let me switch back to dynamic MIDI. And now um, the velocity sent from my keyboard will affect uh, events and it, it this this parameter will scale that velocity. So when I hit the keyboard, and if I hit the keyboard harder, here it's louder. Whereas if I hit it softer, it's quieter. If I have this higher, then basically, or if I just have it all the way up, then basically um, it scales velocity. So no matter how hard or soft I hit notes, it will always be loud. I was hitting it quietly, I was hitting it hard, same volume. And of course, halfway up is basically scaling the velocity by 50%. So basically, I don't have to worry about how hard or soft I hit the keys. I mean, but I can still accent notes if I want to. Cool. Uh, the next is the chord trigger mode. We could have it uh, play the first note in the in the chord and then dynamic MIDI events will take over from there 
and then the next one is the uh, play chord and uh, continue after the chord. So basically it plays the notes in the chord and then it continues after from there. So you can see that the note events were above, were at a higher pitch than what the three original notes were in the chord. The next one is play chord and restart. So that's pretty obvious. It'll play the three notes in the chord and then it'll play the same three notes and then continue on from there. And you can actually see how these first three events exactly line up. Next one is play second note. Starts at the second note in the chord and then continues on from there. I should say it's really the second event in the series. And then this and this note series happens to be generating, you know, the, the, the first three notes are always whatever the first three notes are in the chord. But that deals with more GE programming when I'm really just trying to focus on this uh, clock source parameter. Um, yeah, that's it. Um, let me just uh, show you what it's like to control the clock advance with something else, something more strange like CC1. Um, your mod wheel will usually have an effect on a program, but in this case, I don't have uh, it affecting the program in any way. Like I'm using an initialized AL1 and I took off any kind of uh, um, vibrato that would usually occur from a mod wheel. So, um, with my controls, with my dynamic MIDI set to mod wheel, um, I have the action on continuous. I actually never did show you what uh, momentary and toggle do, but the, I'll, I'll show that when I get to that, to, to this window in the, in the series. Um, so yeah, I, I now can set it to, I'll just set it to off. So when I hit a pad, it doesn't play anything. And then when I move my, um, my, joystick plus Y will have a bunch of events occur. And it's pretty crazy. Like it, because I have it on event, every single little movement creates a flurry of notes. But remember how we could scale it. So we could have like every, basically every other event create a, a clock advance. Well, now, with it set basically as fast as it'll go, I can hit a pad, and then when I go uh, plus Y, it's still a flurry of notes, but at least it's a lot more manageable. So yeah, um, dynamic MIDI is vast, and there's a ton of things you can do with it. But um, yeah, this is this is like a how a lot of the guitars are set up um, in the Kronos, and yeah, it's pretty neat. So that takes care of the clock parameters. Uh, the next series that we'll get into are the note maps. Thank you.